A program is free software if it gives you, the user, the four essential freedoms. Freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish. Freedom one is the freedom to study the source code of the program and then change it to make it do whatever you wish. Freedom two is the freedom to help your neighbor. That's the freedom to redistribute exact copies of the program when you wish. And freedom three is the freedom to contribute to your community. That's the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions when you wish. So if the program gives you all four of these freedoms, then it's free software because the social system of the program's distribution and use is an ethical system, one that respects your freedom and your community. But if one of these freedoms is missing or insufficient, then it's proprietary software because the social system of its distribution and use is unethical. So the difference between free software and proprietary software is not a question of what the code does. Rather, it's a question of the social system that the users of this program have to live in. Either it gives them freedom or not. Either it's ethical or not. So, to develop and release a free program is a contribution to society. How much of a contribution, that depends on all the details. But at least it's being given to society in an ethical way. But a, to develop a proprietary program is not a contribution, it's an attack. The use of a proprietary program is a social problem. The program operates as a trap, inviting people to give up, to give up their freedom and become users of the program. If the program has any attractive features, those are the bait for the trap. But users who value their freedom will refuse to fall into the trap. So, to develop a proprietary program is not a contribution to society, it's harm for, to society. It's better to develop nothing at all than develop a proprietary program. And thus, the aim of the free software movement is that all software be free, so that all users will be free. <clears throat> but what makes these four freedoms essential? Why define free software this way? Each freedom has a reason. Freedom two, the freedom to help your neighbor, the freedom to redistribute exact copies, is essential on basic moral grounds. So you can live an upright ethical life as a good member of your community. If you use a program without freedom too, you are in danger of falling into a moral dilemma. This could happen at any moment. Whenever your friend says, that program is convenient, could I have a copy? You should make sure that you never fall into this dilemma. But how? I know of two ways. One is, don't have any friends. <laughs> That's the method implicitly suggested by the proprietary software developers. The other method is, don't use this proprietary software. If you don't have a copy, you don't have to worry what you would say when your friend asks for another copy. That's my solution. If somebody offers me a program, under the condition that I promise not to share it with you, I refuse it. I say my conscience does not allow me to accept that condition. It would be a betrayal of my duty to my society. 
So take that nasty program out of here. I reject it, and you should reject it too. In any case, this is the reason for freedom too. The freedom to help your neighbor. The freedom to redistribute exact copies of the program. Essential on fundamental moral grounds. Freedom zero, the freedom to run the program as you wish, is essential for a different reason. So you can control your computing. There are proprietary programs that restrict in their licenses the running of the authorized copies. That's obviously not control of your computing. So freedom zero is essential, but it's not enough because that's just the freedom to either do or not do whatever the code of the program actually permits. Which means that the developer continues to impose his decisions on you about how you can use the program, not through the license, but instead through the code. So to control your computing, you need freedom one also which is the freedom to study the source code and then change it to make the program do what you wish. This way, you decide what to do with the program instead of letting the developer decide for you. The developers are all human, so they make mistakes. The code of those programs has bugs, and you can't fix the bugs either. So the user of a program without freedom one is just as helpless facing an accidental error as facing an intentional malicious feature. If you use a program without freedom one, the freedom to study and change the source code, then you are a prisoner of the software you use. Now we, the developers of free software, are human too, so we also make mistakes. But if you come across an error in our code, or anything in our code that you don't like, you are free to change it, because we did not make you a prisoner. We can't be perfect. We can respect your freedom. But freedom one is not enough, because there are millions of computer users that don't know how to program. They're not capable of exercising freedom one, which is the freedom to personally study and change the source code. So the only way we can fully have control of our computing is to do it working together, cooperating. And for that, we need freedom three, the freedom to contribute to your community, the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions. That allows us to work together. Because suppose a few people develop a free program and release it, and we start using it, but it has a problem. Well, somebody can start with that version and implement part of the features we would all... Well, suppo suppose we want more features. We want it to do... We want it to be better. Well, somebody can start with that version, implement part of the features we want, and release his modified version. And then someone else can start with that and implement some more and release her modified version. And then some other people can start with that and implement the rest and release their modified version. And then we will say, oh great, now it does everything we want. Thank you for collaborating to add these features. And what the four freedoms together give us is democracy. <laughs> You see, a free program develops democratically under the control of its users. All the users are free to participate in society's decision about the future of the program, which is simply the sum total of all the individual decisions about what to do with the program. By contrast, a proprietary program develops under the dictatorship of its developer. The developer has total power and the program operates as a tool to impose his power on the users. So, 
With free software, we have individual freedom, social solidarity, and democracy. With proprietary software, we have the dictatorship of the developer who can then command, bully, and exploit the developers. Society should choose free software and should totally reject proprietary software. Proprietary software is an injustice. Our aim is to put an end to this injustice. Our aim is the liberation of cyberspace and all of its inhabitants.